Q2 cleared for takeoff. It makes it much easier for us when we're talking to the airlines and encouraging them to come to our community. The five-year, $60 million Billings Airport expansion project is complete. We'll take you inside. Plus, at the gates. So why, why did you want to be here so early to be first in line? Because I do it every year. Cars line up in West Yellowstone as some park roads open for the summer and showing off their work. The rationalizing that they have to do, the justifying for color concepts. I mean, there is so much that goes into every work of art that they create. A unique art project takes over Rimrock Mall. We'll show it to you. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Russ Riesinger. It's a big day for the Billings Airport, which is officially out of construction season. The second half of the airport's new terminal opening for the first time today. But the bigger work is just beginning. Our Casey Conlon explains. Well, this is the goal, right? More planes coming into Billings. After almost five years and $60 million, Logan International Airport's terminal expansion project finally complete Friday with the opening of Concourse B. Three, two, one, time. Oh. <laughs> what a difference four years makes. In April 2020, Billings Airport was basically shut down like the rest of the country, caught in the beginnings of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nobody could know then just how much that would change the magic city. The dip that we took to our passengers was a significant impact to the community. Recovery has been slow and steady. We're not back up to our high 2019 numbers yet. Airport Director Jeff Roach is hoping this now completely open, shiny new terminal will change that. Nine total gates, almost double the previous airport's capacity, and Montana State fans will be happy with the addition of the Bobcat Gate to Concourse A's Grizzly Gate. It means there's plenty of room for growth. Upgraded terminal with modern equipment and large capacity at the gates and new jet bridges is all extremely important to the air carriers. It's already working. There are 18% more seats available between March and August of this year than 2023. It's music to the city's ears. We need to attract entrepreneurs, business people, investors, retirees. The way they do that is you have a great airport. So this is absolutely essential to our quality of life and uh, to our economy. One, two, all right. This is a positive next step. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. Helena Judge has issued a ruling making it easier for the state's 19 new charter schools to open next fall. A group known as the Montana Quality Education Coalition filed a lawsuit earlier this year over requirements that the Office of Public Instruction was demanding for 19 new charter schools to open. Among those requirements, a parental petition for a student to attend a charter school and approval from a county superintendent and a county commission for a school to open. District Court Judge Michael McMahon has issued a preliminary injunction stating it's not in the public interest to allow an incorrect interpretation of the law that could prevent the opening of schools as authorized by the legislature. A couple accused of animal cruelty appeared in court with the Beaverhead County Sheriff saying it's the worst case of animal abuse he's ever seen in his career. Robert and Constance Riley are charged with felony aggravated animal cruelty. According to court documents, deputies found a horrible scene of rotting animal corpses and animals living in several feet of feces. According to the sheriff, the animals that were still living did not have access to fresh water and were being fed trash and bread wrapped in plastic. 47 animals, including geese, alpacas, pigs, and horses were seized from the property. Deputy Fields went up there and went to the property and says, hey, we're missing these goats. And uh, the lady that was just in court said, yeah, come on the property, you can look. And then that's when we seen the conditions of the animals, the condition of the property. It was just the worst I've ever seen. And I've been doing this for almost 30 years, so. Additional charges may be added before the case heads to district court. The two people were released on their own recognizance. Tensions are high in the Middle East following an Israeli strike on Iran. 
The development comes nearly a week after Iran fired hundreds of missiles at Israel in response to Israel's deadly strike on an Iranian embassy in Syria. U.S. officials are calling for calm. Willie James Inman has the latest from the White House. We're committed to Israel's security. We're also committed to de-escalating. Speaking from the G7 meeting in Italy, Secretary of State Antony Blinken affirmed support for Israel, but stressed the U.S. played no role in Israel's limited strike against Iran. The United States has not been involved in any offensive operations. The United States, along with our partners, will continue to work for de-escalation. The early morning hit was in an area where Iran has several nuclear sites and a major air base. It came in retaliation for Iran's unprecedented retaliatory drone and missile attack on Israel last Saturday. The UN's nuclear agency says Iran's nuclear sites were not damaged in Friday's strike. Iranian officials say its air defense batteries targeted several flying objects that caused no casualties. The U.S. and allies had urged both sides to avoid escalation, concerned about setting off a wider regional war. We have been very, very clear from here, uh, from the beginning, that we do not want to see uh, this conflict uh, escalate. Israel is currently engaged in conflicts on three separate fronts, including the ongoing war with Hamas in Gaza. What we don't know, I think, at this point is whether last night sets the record straight for some period of time or whether we have entered a new phase of escalation. For now, both Israel and Iran are downplaying the latest strike. Willie James Inman, CBS News, the White House. Witnesses described a horrific scene outside a Manhattan courthouse today where they saw a man set himself on fire. It happened while court was in session for former President Donald Trump's hush money trial. Police say the 37-year-old Florida man was throwing pamphlets with conspiracy theory propaganda in the air before setting himself on fire. Witnesses say they observed him pour liquid over his head before setting the flames. Officials on scene quickly rushed over to extinguish the flames that the man is listed in critical condition at a nearby hospital. Law enforcement officials say there's no ongoing threat to public safety, but will reassess security measures for Trump's trial. This comes just a day after lawyers chose 12 New Yorkers, seven men and five women to decide whether Trump falsified business records to hide an alleged affair with adult film star Stormy Daniels. Legal experts say it could be the most closely watched jury in history. Tomorrow marks 25 years since the devastating Columbine High School shooting in Littleton, Colorado. Twelve students and one teacher were killed when a pair of students opened fire in what became one of the most high-profile mass shootings in American history. The shocking attack led to changes in the way some schools were built and how police officers altered their response to active shootings. But school shootings have only become more common since then. The American Academy of Pediatrics says there have been more school shootings in the U.S. in the past five years than in the 20 years prior. Zach Cartea and his sister survived the massacre at Columbine, and he's troubled by the lack of political courage to do something that might make a difference. There's also just kind of a, a general frustration that I have overall that this continues to happen. Um, you know, at 25 years later, this just keeps happening, even though 25 years ago, collectively as a nation, we screamed never again. And that's 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 sort of hard to overcome. Cartea co-founded the Rebels Project, a nonprofit that offers support to survivors of mass shootings and mass trauma. According to the Sandy Hook Promise, 338,000 students have experienced gun violence at school since Columbine. We're now past the midpoint in April, but it doesn't really feel like spring right now. We've had more sunshine today, but still lots of blustery weather, even some more light snow showers occurring over northwestern and north central parts of Montana. But here in the eastern half of the state, a little bit different story for us. We're going to have weaker wind and fewer clouds overnight tonight and also this evening. By tomorrow, we're going to have more sunshine and slightly milder weather, but still cooler than average. Then we're going to have warmer weather on Sunday with a cold front coming. Our complete seven-day forecast coming up. Wildlife sightings in Montana are nothing new, especially in communities like Gardner, which borders Yellowstone National Park. But this was still a scene many even in that town are not used to. The Eight Mile Wolf Pack, the largest pack in Yellowstone, is said to have killed an elk on April 12th, 
leaving its carcass on the Gardner High School football field. The picture posted by school superintendent Jim Baldwin shows a ranger standing over the picked over carcass as it was loaded into a truck. Yellowstone officials believe the pack killed the elk during the night, leaving the site and returning to the park just before dawn. Well, excitement in the air on this opening day of sorts for Yellowstone National Park. As some of the park's interior roads are now open for the spring and summer seasons. MTN's John Shearer visited West Yellowstone this morning as the first guests prepared to enter. This is the line of cars here at West Yellowstone waiting to get into the park at 7.30 in the morning. For the first time, the gates to the interior have been open to regular cars in 2024. Yeah, a little after four. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So why why did you want to be here so early to be first in line? Because I do it every year. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you been first? Three. Well, I'm looking for wildlife, do photography. I do a lot of photography, so I enjoy, uh, enjoy watching the animals and stuff. Not all park roads are open just yet. Right now, you can travel from West Yellowstone to Old Faithful, up to Norris, and over to Canyon. The road is also open from Mammoth to Norris. The road from Mammoth to Cook City remains open year-round. But the lake area, the Hayden Valley, Washburn Mountain, the East Entrance, and the South Entrance roads all remain closed while snow plowing operations continue. Uh, well, hopefully we could see the, uh, some grizzlies, maybe some wolves, or maybe some moose. I've never seen a moose up close, so hopefully we get a chance to see them. You can't go there yet, but once the Hayden Valley opens for the season, there will be some new limitations starting in July on park visitors. A nearly 16,500 acre bear management area is being created. While the Mary Mountain Trail will remain open, off-trail travel will not be allowed in the area from July 15th to September 15th. Why now? Well, wildlife is using the landscape a little bit differently today. The park has changed a lot since the original bear management areas were first created in 1982. Uh, fires of 1988, uh, warming climate, drier summers. And all that has a big effect on how people and bears react to each other. A disproportionate amount of the bear-inflicted human injuries are occurring in Hayden Valley compared to the rest of the park. So Hayden Valley, it's about 1% um, of the park, but it was accounting for about 20% of the grizzly bear inflicted human injuries. Park managers say just one trail in the Hayden will remain open for a good reason. Well, because that makes uh, visitor activity predictable to bears and bears are less, less likely to react defensively during encounters uh, when human when humans are in predictable areas. If you're hiking in the park, there are steps you can take to stay safe around bears. Most of our injuries are solo hikers traveling off trail uh, and not carrying bear spray. Kerry says the best way to see bears in the spring is to just drive around. He recommends Tower, Hayden Valley, the East Entrance Road near Lake Butte, and the Lamar Valley. In Yellowstone National Park, John Shearer, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News here on Q2, Mall Art. Fourth grade students show off their amazing work for all to see. We'll take you there. Plus, are you ready for some football? Rocky is. Spring drills are underway as the Batland Bears welcome in nearly 60 new faces. But next, how's the weekend look? Jason will let you know with the full forecast right after the break.